Good evening, everyone. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. An attack on America and its democracy. Protesters storm the U.S. Capitol. The Senate chambers are breached. Lawmakers are evacuated as violence erupts on Capitol Hill. Well, at least one person is dead after thousands of President Trump followers took over the U.S. Capitol this afternoon, despite pleas to stop by fellow Republicans. Q2's Russ Riesinger is standing by now with the very latest. Russ. Well, Janelle, this truly is a sad day for our country and one that a lot of people could never have imagined happening here. National Guard and police in riot gear have managed to move crowds back from our nation's Capitol building but it really was an unbelievable scene earlier. They had just begun counting the electoral votes to certify Joe Biden as president when a large mob of protesters scaled security scaffolding, broke doors, smashed windows, even made their way into the Senate chamber. Now lawmakers were evacuated to safety. One woman was shot and killed. CBS also reports that at least two explosive devices were found. President-elect Biden addressed the nation, calling it an assault on our democracy. Threatening the safety of duly elected officials. It's not protest. It's insurrection. The world's watching. Like so many other Americans, I am genuinely shocked and saddened that our nation, so long the beacon of light and hope for democracy, has come to such a dark moment. Now, President Trump did send out a video late this afternoon. He called for peace but once again insisted the, the election had been stolen from him. This was a fraudulent election, but we can't play into the hands of these people. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. Despite all that has transpired, the plan is to continue the certification count tonight. That is expected to begin again within the next half hour. Janelle. All right. Thanks so much. Well, as pro-Trump protesters broke into the Capitol today, Montana Senator John Tester was in his D.C. office nearby. Now, he tells us he was preparing remarks for the upcoming debate on objections to the presidential vote. He and his staff were then taken to a safer location, but he says Congress should reconvene as soon as possible to affirm Democrat Joe Biden's victory. MTN's Mike Dennison spoke with Tester earlier this evening and files this report. Senator Tester said the Senate had just begun to debate an objection to the vote in Arizona when the Capitol was breached by protesters. What we witnessed today uh, is, is, is stunning and it's very, very sad. Uh, it makes us weaker domestically as a country. And in the eyes of our foreign adversaries, it is absolutely uh, just cheapens this country like crazy. Tester, a Democrat, will be voting to certify the Electoral College votes that gave Democrat Joe Biden the presidency and had harsh words for those who promote the false notion that the election was marred by fraud. To those of my colleagues who invited this chaos, on, chaos onto our country, I would just say uh, you have inflicted grave harm on our democracy for your own political gain. And, and the fact is they've enabled violence to enter the front doors of our United States Capitol. He said there's no evidence of the election being stolen or somehow manipulated and that peaceful transfers of power have been a hallmark of American democracy. So I think it's really important that people out there understand that some elections you win, some elections you lose. And part of what's made this country great is a peaceful transfer of power and the ability to debate one another and come up with compromises and find common ground of people who don't see the world in the same way. That's what's made this country great from the beginning. Tester also said peaceful protest is an American tradition, but when it crosses the line into violence, it cannot be tolerated. And while the situation in Washington, D.C. remained unsettled late Wednesday, Tester said he's ready to go back to the Capitol and complete the certification of Biden's victory. I think we need to go back in as soon as the Capitol is deemed safe, whatever hour of the day or night that is. And we need to uh, continue the job that we started at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News.
All right, thanks so much, Mike. Now, Senator Steve Daines, one of 11 senators prepared to object to the Electoral College results today, was also ushered out of chambers to safety. He sent this tweet this afternoon, quote, I condemn any kind of violence and intimidation. This is unacceptable. Now, Q2 has reached out to Daines, but he has yet to issue any further statements so far today. Well, the newest member of Montana's congressional delegation, Republican Representative Matt Rosendale, also took to social media to say he and his staff are safe. He said, quote, I condemn political violence of any kind. There is a peaceful process to resolve this, which is what we were attempting to do. And Wyoming Senators Barrasso and Loomis also sent out statements condemning the protest. Congresswoman and House Republican Conference Chair Liz Cheney told NBC News today, Quote, we have deep political differences, but we don't resolve those by mob violence. The president's statement was completely inadequate. What he has done and what he is caused here is something that we've never seen before in our history. Well, many Q2 viewers have been commenting on the KTVQ Facebook page since the protests, protesters breached the Capitol building. One viewer states, quote, this makes my heart so sad. This is not a conservative reaction, nor is it Trump's responsibility or fault. God bless and heal our nation. Another says this is so un-American. The viewer says, as president of our country, you need to take control of this crazy situation. You are putting lives in danger. And here's some more comments. I support our president, but this is not the answer. That is we the people's building. And these are not patriots. They are criminals, unquote. Now, those comments came from just two of our posts and more than 3,000 people had responded to all of those stories as of five o'clock tonight. Well, over at Montana State Capitol in Helena, protesters gathered peacefully outside to show their support for President Donald Trump. Some singing and chanting and even passing drivers even honking their horns to show that support. Even though officials, including some inside the Trump administration, have disputed claims of widespread voter fraud, demonstrators tell us they feel like their voices have not been heard and that they do not believe the results of the presidential election are legitimate. This is how Trump supporters are. We don't go through and break buildings. We don't go uh, burning buildings down. We don't go and hurt people, hurt their property. We're not like that. That's not how Trump wanted us to be. We are not going to go trash storefronts or hurt Americans, but we are going to take our country back. And if that's our last avenue to do, but if they follow our Constitution the way it's written, it, we shouldn't have to do anything. Came out today to support our president. Uh, I feel like the election was robbed from him. He has fought for us for the last four years. And in Billings today, local Trump supporters gathered in two Stop the Steal rallies campaign. To keep rallies today, QT's Mitch Laggy attended both and brings us the details. On Wednesday, a group of people in Billings gathered at two Stop the Steal rallies, encouraging Montana's congressional delegation to vote against certifying the 2020 presidential election results. The rallies were organized by Peggy Miller, a Laurel woman who's been at the head of other pro-Donald Trump rallies in the Billings area since April of last year. She's also organized a few events dubbed Freedom Drives, which comprise a parade of patriotically decorated cars that snaked through Billings and Laurel several times last year. I've always been engaged and involved for over 30 years, and so this year has even been more of a magnitude with everything that's going on and just uh, wanting to save America, wanting to have fair integrity elections. I want the country, I think all of us should want to know that our elections are good and fair. At 10 a.m., rally goers met outside U.S. Senator Steve Daines' office in downtown Billings, waving flags and receiving honks from passing cars. Miller offered a message to Montana's Republican leadership in Congress. And we are encouraging our Congressman Matt Rosendale, our Senator Steve Daines, to continue to take their stand that they've sworn to, to the Montana right now, that they will oppose the Electoral College vote when it is presented to them. At noon, the group moved on to the Billings West End and stood on the sidewalk on King Avenue West. The line of rally goers stretched for about a block on King Avenue West, from its intersection at 24th Street West to the Walmart entrance on King Avenue. In the half hour I spent there, there were few moments of quiet, 
with many passing cars honking their horns in support. Dale Blum of Laurel was holding an American flag in the front line of rally goers. I'm just really glad to see this many patriots out there and to hear so much uh, honking and stuff from the people here in, in Billings and stuff like that. I think it shows that, that they're concerned too. Blum said he does trust Montana's election results, but not the results in states like Michigan and Wisconsin, which the Trump campaign sued over and lost, with judges seeing no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Well, I think they're being stolen. You know, I, uh, I've been watching that pretty close and stuff, and these I've, I've not uh, had any faith in these voting machines for years and years and years because uh, you can you can hack them, you can change things and stuff like that. So no, it's to me we're we're doing the right thing here with with uh, written ballots and stuff like that. It's still you can still steal, but it makes it harder. While some protests in Washington D.C. became violent, the rallies in Billings were both peaceful during the time Q2 was on scene. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Mitch. Ahead on tonight's MTN 530 News right here on Q2, the new Montana rollout of COVID-19 vaccines is released. We'll tell you who qualifies. Plus, later in sports, celebrating our Athletes of the Week, who will have you cheering for more. And this winter, it seems like so far, 50 has become the new 40. Another 50-degree day today. No measurable precipitation so far this year, but that could change tomorrow. Details are coming up. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Nearly two years after an eight-year-old Bighorn County girl went missing, two women are now charged in connection with her disappearance. A missing endangered person advisory was issued for eight-year-old Mildred Old Crow this past November. Now, Veronica Dust and Rosine Lincoln Old Crow are both charged with endangering the welfare of a child. Now, that's a misdemeanor on the Crow Reservation. The women were arrested last month in Billings as fugitives from justice on warrants by the Crow tribe. Now, the warrants state that Dust and Lincoln Old Crow failed to produce the child, nor was any proof of life provided. Mildred was last seen in March 2019. During their arraignments in Bighorn County District Court Tuesday, the women's bonds were set at $1,000, and both women posted bail today. They now have three days to appear in Crow tribal courts. Well, any future arrests or new charges depend on the tribal court and investigation by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Well, tonight we have new details on how Montana will roll out COVID-19 vaccines for those with a high-risk medical condition. This following Governor Greg Gianforte's plan he outlined yesterday. 
Now, this includes everyone 16 to 69 years old with underlying health issues. Those with the Department of Public Health and Human Services say this includes those with cancer, Down syndrome, sickle cell disease, severe obesity and diabetes. Those 70 years and older will also start receiving the vaccine. And state health authorities report six more COVID-19 related deaths since yesterday. Two more in Yellowstone County and one in each Custer, Park, Gallatin and Missoula counties. 1,042 Montanans have died. More than 78,000 have recovered. And Billings Clinic. And Billings Clinic now offers COVID-19 testing results within 24 to 48 hours. In the, in the in-house tag path system, which is a molecular test, has received emergency use authorization from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Thanks to the new test and system, analysis can now happen on site. And the hospital says that significantly reduces the need to send tests to the state or to other outside laboratories. Billings Clinic tells us the platform provides results that are much more accurate than antigen testing methods. Well, up next in weather, the first chance of real rain and snow is on the way. Meteorologist Ed McIntosh lets us know when and where. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Welcome back as we take a look. Great picture from Jennifer over at Wapatee. Uh, yesterday evening started to see the sunset there and you can see just a few clouds across the region. Now as we take a look with the Stockman Bank weather cam, we've got more clouds around the Billings area as we start getting into the evening hours. 44, still a very warm reading with a southwest wind at 20 miles per hour. Very low humidity, though. That'll start to increase as we start getting into the rest of tonight and heading into tomorrow. Thanks in part to these showers starting to move through the panhandle of Idaho into western Montana. Still some very warm readings across the eastern plains, well above the averages in most cases. Cody at 34, 40 for you this evening in Livingston, 42 in Miles City. Sheridan, you're a little cooler at 32, 31 down in Warland, 43 for you in Jordan. But the winds 20 miles per hour from Livingston out towards Billings and that will continue to keep things a little warmer and a little bit drier as we start getting through the overnight hours of tonight. So here's the setup. We're starting to see a few more clouds. This bit of a Chinook arch starting to form here where the cloud cover starts to come off the ridge top mountains around uh, Great Falls. Meanwhile, the blue arrow is indicating where the stronger winds are starting to take this next weather disturbance and push it back across the region. Still a fairly fast moving system as we've seen so often here in recent weeks. But this will also bring in a decent chance of showers as it's tapping into a lot more moisture. The snow over into the Cascades is continuing to accumulate as this weather system moves in and starts to bring into the better roots. First, a chance of snow showers for the higher elevations. The mountain passes of western Montana will be affected a lot more tonight heading into tomorrow morning. Now, here we are first thing on Thursday. Uh, temperatures will start to uh, well actually hold up pretty well because of the cloud cover, but then start to drop a bit as that disturbance moves across the region through the 
the afternoon. A chance of rain and snow showers. Now with the winds blowing just even a bit, it'll help to dry things out from Billings towards the west, but across eastern Montana, a better chance of some snow showers. Overall accumulations will stay light, but we could see some pockets of even up to three to five inches of snow in southeastern Montana. Cooler air will start to move in behind that as we get in towards Friday and Saturday and drive the temperatures a little bit closer to average. So the overnight temperatures hold up pretty well. Some exceptions where we have some breaks in the clouds in eastern Montana, but especially where the winds are blowing a little bit more Then tomorrow. Still hitting 30s and 40s for the highs, but that area of showers will start to move through and you can check out where we could even see more of a rain snow mix. This area from around Broadus towards uh, Crow Agency uh, 212 could have some travel concerns, maybe I-90 from Hardin South also some travel problems by tomorrow afternoon and evening and then this system will continue to shift out as we start looking into late Thursday even Friday morning a few flurries could remain for the most part snow totals will remain fairly modest except for the higher elevations although we're going to be watching this area of southeastern Montana for the potential for some higher accumulations or at least some pockets of heavier snow so our day planner heading into tomorrow the temperatures move to the upper 20s low 30s by first thing tomorrow morning and then start to warm up into the low 40s we'll be looking at a chance of rain and snow showers that will actually increase as the day goes on then things start to taper off by the evening hours leaving us a little bit cooler around average for this time of the year on Friday and Saturday but that red high pressure ridge wants to build back in and we could be close to 50 degrees all over again next week. Janelle back to you. All right thanks so much Ed. We have some breaking news. CBS News is just reporting that Senator Steve Daines here of Montana will be reversing his course and he will approve the electoral votes confirming Joe Biden as the next president. We'll have the latest at KTVQ.com. And up next in sports, we hit the hoops with a team that's a force on the court, hoping to keep their... Welcome back, everyone. Well, Q2's Athletes of the Week open your high school basketball season tomorrow, hoping to pick up where they left off on top. Scott Breen shows us. Well, hi, everybody. West High's basketball girls, co-state double-A champions last season, but not so much in the mood to share this time around. Last March, the Bears won their Friday night semifinal 48-30 over Missoula Sentinel before the Montana High School Association announced that was as far as the tournament would go. West would have played Helena Capital for the outright title that Saturday night. Still, the Bears stitched another season to their championship banner hanging from the Golden Dome rafters. They could be on track for back-to-back, -back, returning a dynamic and maybe more dangerous 2021 team. Having multi-sport athletes is just a great thing. Um, we have success coming from both the volleyball and soccer programs, and it just breeds success, so it's, it's been fun so far. 
That's a fact not lost on post player Kendall Ellis, who doubles as West High's towering goalkeeper on the soccer field, where she also owns a state double-A championship. And everyone's just like great athletes, so we all mix very well uh, in the end of it. Um, we all work hard, and but yeah, it's, we have soccer, basketball, and volleyball, so it's a mix of everything. The Bears bid farewell to seven basketball seniors and only have two on this year's roster. But they are a deep squad, right down to some tenacious freshmen who figure to see plenty of varsity playing time. Safe to say, the Bears should find plenty of fast-paced ways to score. I like running it. I think it's fun just to get up and down the court and with high pressure. No, I like the running gun. It's easier, too. It's easy to pass layups. We have a very athletic team, so I think we can do all that stuff. With the later high school start this season, this is opening week, a lot of teams have well over 20 practices under the belt. Not the Bears, who were stuck on the shelf with contact tracing just as workouts opened back in December. We actually were out from the 9th and we got back to 28th. So we're in practice 9 right now. Johnson can only smile at that latest challenge. He's seen his share from playing days at Billings Senior a couple decades ago to now hosting title trophies with the rival girls at West. I knew one day I did want to coach, you know, and I, I was coaching boys with Sturgar there for a couple years, and I was out at Broadview for a couple years, and the path just took me back to, uh, you know, coming over to West, and you know, I've loved it, every minute of it. He's awesome. Uh, I love him as a coach. He makes us work hard, but he always makes sure that we have fun at the end of the day, too. No, he's the funnest one. Mac brings the defense, which is the hardest part, but we still love Mac. And these days, it's not just about basketball for Johnson. From the teaching, I love my staff and department. I enjoy coming to work every day, and obviously the, the athletes and the kids. It's just, I'm just going to do it until they kick me out of here. Which likely won't be anytime soon. Scott Breen, MTN Sports. And West is at Bozeman High tomorrow night and plays at home Saturday at 4 o'clock against Gallatin. We'll be right back.